Film Courage, the radio show. We're outside the studio with our wonderful co-host for today's show with Peter Shankman, actor, producer, writer, Wes Liang. And uh, Wes has been a friend of ours for many years, and he's been talking to us about how he's wanted to do his own project for a long time. And he finally did that <coughs> with a, a movie called Night Dream Blues. Yep. And because you had talked about this for so long, what was it that kind of finally gave you the kick in the pants to do it? And how did you find the discipline? It's so easy to like be in LA and then you get distracted by a million things. Where did you hone that discipline? Where did you hone that time? I, I think in a lot of ways, um, th you know, through the process of making this project happen, I've, I've really come to believe that things will happen the way they're supposed to happen. And you can sort of have your own ideas about how it's going to happen. And you can try to fit that square peg in that round hole, but in a lot of ways, it's going to happen the way it's supposed to happen. And, and my meaning is that I started the project. Uh, I started thinking about the idea about two and a half years ago, and I started writing it. And I, you know, went through a series of, of changes in terms of drafts, in terms of people being attached to the project. And then I kind of like it lost steam. I lost sort of faith in a project and I got distracted like you said by by other projects and I went away and then um, for I don't know for whatever reason um, I, I I come back to it and I've been I was driving I was thinking about the project and I said I should go back and do another draft and then I went back and did another draft and I got immediately excited about it and then just so happens at that time I was um, speaking to uh, a, an actor friend of mine who had come off producing a project and I sort of you know spoke to him about this other project and then several weeks later I, I you know ran into a director friend and um, I sort of got her interested in her project and and then it sort of like became this whole other animal that I don't think it could have been a year and a half two years ago you know um, so I think in a lot of ways you know, and, and I sort of compare this to like the discipline of writing. Sometimes the best thing to do is to walk away from the, the computer or that scene or that character. Um, and so that's what I had to do. I wrote it, I wrote it, I wrote it, and I, I believed in it. And then for whatever reason, I just organically had to walk away. You know, I, I had gone through a series of readings and met several people and then it somehow lost steam, I lost interest in it, and I just walked away. And I didn't think about, gosh, I, I, I need to get back to it. I, I just I just knew that there was a good story there and at some point it would come out. And So I walked away and then probably like eight, eight and a half months later, it sort of like came back to me in my head and I started figuring things out. I went back to the computer and and then and then it's sort of like I had this new engine in the, in 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 the, in, the, in the product and um, so I think throughout the entire course of getting this film produced and shot, um, I've I've really sort of come to believe that that whatever we do as artists, sometimes we just have to like know when to walk away and know when to like let it breathe. And, and if it's a good product, if it's a good story, if it's a good project, it'll it'll happen on its own. Um, it'll happen with the people that you may not have imagined, but it'll happen with the right people. Um, so yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're not about forcing things, because I think Stephen King had also talked about that too, like writing scripts and then putting them in a drawer for a short time to kind of give them some space, yeah, and then come back to it fresh. It sounds like then you're not about forcing the issue. Because I know we spoke to a guy named Koo, who mm -hmm. has nofilmschool.com, mm -hmm. and also um, the Kickstarter campaign for Manchild. Uh -huh. And he was telling us how he clocks his time yeah. to do a full eight hours. And yeah. I just thought that was great. And I know as someone who has struggled with their own discipline, do you find that you have to rein yourself in sometimes, or do you like more freedom, and you think that the freedom is good because that enables you to become more creative and... and I, I think discipline is really important because when I was writing, I was actively writing every single day. You 
I was sitting in front of the computer and I was working out scenes and, and, and if there's a problem in my head about the story, about the characters, or about a scene, I would try to work it out. Um, I do believe that nothing happened. Like, you know, I, I spoke with a friend of mine who's uh, like some, you know, like has a PhD in science and in like astrophysics or whatever. And, and she was telling me this, this idea that the only law that governs the universe is cause and effect. You know, is that is that something happens and there's always an effect, you know, um, and, th and and so science is always trying to study the cause and effect, and so I, I I really come to believe that everything happens because something else happened. I've I made a phone call to someone and now that person has called me back, and that, and what and if that person doesn't call me back, that person at least knows that I called them. And so, throughout the, the entire um, process of writing this movie, I really tried to, to hold on to the idea that if I don't write it, it's not going to get written. And if I don't solve this problem, it's not going to get solved. And if I don't talk to this director about potentially directing this movie, or that actor about possibly auditioning, or that producer about possibly investing, it's not going to get done. And so sometimes you have to, like, you have to, like, ask for the business you know you have to ask for the for the you know, investment or, or whatever and so I think discipline is really really important I don't believe in the idea that you could just sort of like wake up and be like eh, just walk away I think you have to be disciplined I think part of the discipline is knowing when to let it breathe knowing when to sort of like you know I, I never wrote on the weekends ever um, I, I believe that you have to give yourself space to walk away and so I would wake up at 8.30 every single morning and I would have my cup of coffee and I would write, write, write and then I would go and have lunch with a friend, I would come back and I would have an audition or whatever and I would write and then at some point after dinner I would be like I'm going to go watch a movie or I'm going to go read or whatever and then when weekends come I'm out having fun, I'm doing other things, I'm at work or I'm you know doing a play or whatever because I think that I th for me, and I don't know how other people work, but for me, I have to have that balance. I have to be like sane in my head to be able to attack a problem. You know, I can't, I can't d be desperate. You know, and um, but about discipline, I do think that there's a cause and effect. And so, if you want an effect, you have to cause it. You know, and um, and so that was my entire process was. You know, I made a lot of phone calls to people, and I spoke with a lot of directors about this movie, and I had to make pitches, and I had to, you know, I think you guys were the people who really, really, um, through our friendship, really suggested that you that like, hey, West, you should really get on Kickstarter. And for a while, crowdfunding was like, I was like, no, I'm not going to go and beg for money. You know, like, what is this? I'm going to go get it from real investors. And I think you, I heard about crowdfunding with you guys, and I. Saw saw you know a mutual friend uh, Brian Durkin do do his thing and and I was like wow I really really want to try to do this and what else are you gonna do right and so we we talked about it with some of our other producers about crowdfunding and they initially felt the same way they're like let's try to get real money from real investors and at some point we were all like hey for a project with 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 our budget you know a uh, hundred dollars is a hundred dollars you know you can't you can't shit on that so I. You know, we, we and that was that was a clear example of cause and effect. We had to, you know, shoot a mock trailer. We ha I had to write the literature for it. We had to start an account, and then we had to like launch it, and then we had to like tell people about it, and then immediately there was, you know, um, effect because we raised in our first weekend we raised um, like fifteen hundred dollars in the first weekend, um, and then it dipped immediately. Um, but the first weekend we were like, oh my god, like I think our third investor donated $250 and he's like a fellow actor friend. Um, but that's an example of cause and effect, you know, and that, that I think is really, really sort of universal and that we have to sort of like do.